everyone welcome back to another video for me please have my name and today in this video we're gonna talk about the previous update which is gonna come out on march 13 and guys let me tell you this update is big there are some crazy changes and the developers have listened to the community and today i'm also not alone here i have springles and slippy two members of 93hh and we're gonna go through the update and talking about every aspect from it and giving you our opinions. All right, guys. So as you can see, uh, it's coming out basically in one week. And the first thing what appears here is the anniversary celebrate celeb I cannot talk celebrations uh, events. And this is going to be a 14 day series of fantastic events. And man, this looks this looks really crazy. We have read it all. Um, so yeah, what what do you think, guys, about this upcoming anniversary celebrations? Um, I'm excited. You know, free free loot and you know bundles to buy again. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they are good. I'm assuming they are. Last ones were really good, actually. They're cheap and really worth it. Yeah, it, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be similar to the Lunar New Year type event, right? Where they got a city theme, some frames, and and some nameplates. It's probably going to hopefully be pretty free-to-play friendly as well, just like the Lunar New Year was. I mean, you pretty much could guaranteed to get the skin in the Lunar New Year event. So oh, I yeah, think that'll sure. help, a, help a lot of the community that don't have the access to, you know, that the wallet part of the game, right? So I think that would be great. Uh, some avatar frames and nameplates are always nice. Uh, cosmetics are a great feature to add to any game, right? Anytime you can personalize it and get invested in your in your city and how it looks and all that stuff, it, it just increases engagement for the player base. Yeah, definitely. Also, what I'm looking very forward is the anniversary gift. I like claim your gem bundle as a token of our thanks. I mean, it's the first year, right? The uh, the game is um, almost one year out, and uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward what exactly they're gonna gift us there. Since normally the gifts they're giving us via the codes, for example, right, um, which you claim is not that big, like it's a cup of keys, and uh, so gems. yeah, it's like uh, they the devs holding really back when it comes to gifting stuff. I think since uh like if they're gifting too much i can understand the point like gifting too much can have a big impact on the game um and i mean we have all these events where you're claiming when the darklings like you have all this daily stuff if you're doing that all you're getting pretty much um every day for free um and then on top of that you have sometimes these gift codes but i mean like when do they put them out like every couple months you know like on when when something special is coming like on special an event or something uh, like New Year's, for example, where we got some keys, but the rewards were never that great, in my opinion. So I'm looking very forward to this, in my opinion. Like this is probably one of the things which I personally looking most forward for. How much you actually get? Like it's the first year. I think the game we're having sure up and downs, but overall, I think the game have performed pretty well. So I'm looking forward. To what are they giving us exactly for this anniversary gift? Um, yeah, so guys, if you um, want to read everything of this, you can also pause the video if you haven't finished yet. So let's move on to point number two, which have some really good changes uh, when it comes to gameplay in the game. And we're starting with a, fa with a point of season two plus is now referred to as season B1. This does not affect the season content. The first thing what in my mind came, guys, was the aspect of that we have right now season T1 and now season B1. And with that as a standpoint, I was directly thinking about like global migration. And since we're planning to bring out global migration in May, right? Um, that after season two, you can basically like migrate to that server like once you, uh once the season two have finished and you're entering and you can choose either between season b1 or season t1 that's what in my mind came first 
um, which have then also something to do with the global migration as in Rise of Kingdoms, for example, after KVK2, you can migrate to that server. Like uh, after KVK1, you can, so basically season two, you can migrate to that server. So it's it's looking like kind of similar, right? And maybe, I don't know, what do you guys think about that? Would be there also something which you would assume or is it just an, an, a random name for a season? Uh, that's what I'm assuming as well, and it can make it so like whenever the global migration does come out, you'll have your king system, and your king can go, "Hey, let's do T1 or B1." Yeah, yeah. I think they're changing the name just to make it easier to differentiate it too, right? Because you say season two, then you say season two plus, and there's a, a there's a little bit of possibility of confusions when you have a completely different letter thrown in it, thrown in there, right? You refer to it as. Mm. as Belleron 1, right? It separates it from Season 2, right? So you have Season 1, Season 2, SB1, ST1, right? I think is uh, the... the When we go back to uh, Tamaris, right? So they're yeah. named differently, so that it, it'll make it easier for the player base to understand what they're jumping into, right? Because there's really... If you look at the, you know when you press K and you look at all the different things, the differences in the names is really just like the words behind the season number, right? It'll say like a fire of ice or whatever, right? Having mm -hmm. the seasons label completely differently is going to allow the players to be able to differentiate what content they're jumping into. Cause you don't want players to accidentally pick the wrong season when it comes time for jumping, you know, migrations and things like that. Right. Imagine you pick season two plus and you meant to pick season two right or something like that and then there's yeah. no back right so they want to eliminate that from maybe possibly a user error right or maybe they just want to give it a name so that people just don't get confused by it anymore right um it's maybe yeah we'd have to see what comes after the name change but the name change is, is good i mean clearing things up and removing some muddiness right players love to use abbreviations right so people are probably going to call this sb1 from now on right and it'll help differentiate the seasons and stuff when players are discussing it and making plans definitely yeah definitely but i'm i'm also wondering what does the number have to to me and like you could just call it season b or like something i think the number um also proves or, or like would it gives me the strong feeling of that the global migration have also something to do with these seasons after the name changes. Um, like B1, it could be then also B2, which is a Valorant map, right? But just like differency. Like there's yeah, slightly and change. Like, you know, whole map change and it's gonna be like Tamaris just with a Valorant content, right? So um, maybe something like that. That's what I'm assuming with this current name change and with the aspect in the mind, okay, that we're gonna get global migration soon. So this looks this looks really interesting. I'm I'm looking very forward for that. Uh Springers, you wanted to say something? No, you good. Alright. Um improve the season two map. Players entering season two will be able to draw an all new map once the update is complete. This will not affect players currently in season two. Which is kind of sad for us guys, as we are currently in season two, right? We just joined it like two weeks ago. Um, so it would be, I mean, for you, uh, Slippy is also, right? It's not good as you have multiple accounts in season two. So, I mean, for our newer players, it's nice to play this current map. But for us, uh, for all three of us, we all played this map already, right? We, we we know what the what the stuff um is in that season so a whole new map for season two would have been nice to play to be honest but i mean i guess it is it is what it is um i mean it says all new right this is an all new map so they're changing yeah. everything yeah. exactly it's gonna be interesting to see what they try to do with the change right are they going to you know make it more friendly for you know land-based units right because right now season two's biggest pitfall is like if you can't fly you're snaking up and down the map just to get to the fight right um yeah. because of all the mountains and rivers right so flying units really have an advantage now to be fair flying units should have some type of advantage right 
but it's yeah. kind of like a lot of choke points, things like that. Uh, so we don't have turrets in season two, right? That's a two plus thing. So I'm not concerned about having it where you get to these massive stalemates like you get when everybody has like a bajillion turrets up. So I don't think that's what they're trying to fix with this. I just maybe they want to give it a new feel, right? Uh, maybe make it more exciting or I don't know, because it depends on you know how the server itself hashes out how exciting your season two is right because mm -hmm. you go if you have a zone one war in the first week and if you're not fighting within your zone after the first week what are you waiting two three four weeks before you could do anything outside of just statues so maybe they're gonna you know do what they did in two plus right where past two opens and you can go straight to war you know yeah. touching flags and going ham right i mean they might be trying to you know, increase engagement, right? You're keeping fighting and active. I mean, there is a certain point where you get fatigued if you keep fighting too much, right? Then that's too long. So they have to find a... I think, I'm think i hoping they find some kind of balance in that, right? Because I think in Season 2, there, you have way too many gaps in fighting in the first half of the season other than the statues. While in 2+, plus, you're fighting, like, from the jump on right like as soon as you get to zone two you're fighting for the rest of the season pretty much non-stop so i imagine they're trying to get you know some kind of balance in there with the map maybe i'm not sure we'd have to see what it looks like i'm really interested to see what their what their plan for that is right yeah um i can i can give like a um um example on that like season two map feels like the kvk3 and west of kingdoms um the problem with that is like you you coming onto the map and you basically just fight in the last zone in in that KVK map and that is the same thing in in this season too like you like you said like if you don't have a zone one more you basically just go up until what pass four opens for the last zone and then pass five is di is directly the last zone so and I think maybe like a balancing right like you said. Um, Maybe they could like um opening the zone three earlier, right? Or like making uh, a zone two war or something. I don't know. But season two map, the current season two map design, it's just way too slow if you don't have early like zone fighting. I don't mean the stage of fighting. It's come on, the stage of fighting you cannot compare with the uh, actual zone fighting. Like you can only send one march into the stage. Of, and it's also only one hour every like couple of days. It's like pretty slow to be honest. So um, You know what would be a crazy change they can make to fix that? What if I mean, they made the square where the statue is bigger? So it's bigger where it touches both passes. And when you win the statue fight, you possess the statue and have the ability to go in and take over <laughs> or fight for that other pass on the other side. Like, giving the ability for the statue fight to have prolonged effects, possibly, right? Something like that. Maybe they're thinking something like that, or some way to make... Because the statue fight's kind of like... Eventually, in a lot of servers, you wind up getting to the end, and, like, people are just AFK at the statue, flying above it, right? Just to get yeah. their point. No yeah. one fights there once everyone hits their season max. Now, to be fair, you're fighting, you know, in Zone 4, by, probably by that point, right? But I'd like to see, like, them kind of give more incentive on that fight right like it's every 36 hours but it's like give it make it matter more like yes yeah, stamina is a big deal right but there's there's a certain point where you're like oh this is really important right we want to get this for more than just this right i think the season points are great but i think do something for the alliance too right like some kind of reward like oh you won the statue you get 100 gems or something it doesn't have to even be, be something big right because people yeah. go out of their way just to try to complete auger stone stuff, right? And the auger stone rewards are not really prolific, right? They're not game-breaking rewards, but people will still go out of their way as an alliance to achieve those goals, right? Maybe adding an extra goal to the statue fights makes them more important. Um, I mean, I, I understand not being able to raid a zone one deal, right? You got to give these folks a place to be safe. But, I mean, they did create Truce Island, right? So, yeah. like, let's say you lose the statue, and they come to the other side, and they just roadhouse you, right? You just go to statue, you know, go to Truce Island for three days. And then, like, when the statue fight comes, it, you know, it eliminates, you know, it goes back to gray. And so now the pass could just be free-tooken, so you go back in and fight, right? 
immediately get back in there and try to fight for the pass. You know what I mean? It could make it yeah. where you can't build flags on the other side. But it could be something like you get access to it to just walk across and harass or, you know, something like that. I don't know. Just thinking of things that, you know, could be improved without changing the entire map, right? Um, but yeah, it's 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 just it's interesting. We'll see how the season two map looks once it goes live. Uh, I imagine there's people that are gonna hit season two the day it comes out, but we won't be Probably, able to yeah. view it, right? We have to wait yeah. till past one. Yeah, yeah, I have to wait till past one. Sadly. So a couple of days basically. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I just hope for the new server, it's gonna be a good map with like the balanced fighting. Like you don't need to fight every zone. Um, I mean, people always say, yeah, we want to fight more and more and more. But I mean, at some point, it can be also getting tired. Uh, I prefer to have like a um more balanced way of war. So like not every fucking zone, and then not all like. You know, zone two opens, you have fighting. Then zone three opens, you have fighting. Zone four opens, you have fighting. Like you could make it balanced. Like zone two is fighting. Then zone three is like the shilling zone where you prepare for the last zone for zone four. Um, something like that. That's what I like. Um, to also give the players the rest and not feel over tired of a game. Like that's also a big thing, right? Like people can get pretty fast tired. Um, if like. Is there's so much stuff going on, and I mean, before there's a lot of stuff going on, and then we have also behemoths opening, and then the events you do, and daily stuff, you know. So it can be, it can become very quickly tired for the normal player base. So, um, I just hope for the new servers when we entering with new season two map, but um, that the devs have work on it with a more balanced way and not just like the beginnings where you tie it and the last two zones you're fighting non-stop basically um so what uh the next point improve the alliance recommendation alliance joining features in season t1 the system will not recommend alliance where the leader and rank four members have been inactive for a period of time if you try to join an inactive alliance you will be notified beforehand i mean pretty sure what that means i think we don't need to talk about that Improved season talent quests in season T1. Calculations for the quests. Legendary Spear, Conquering Sword, and Fearless Blade now begin 24 hours after August Stone stage. Chest of Desire begins previously 12 hours. I think it's also clear. Wait, it's uh, whatever. <laughs> if it's now 12 or 24 hours, doesn't really matter that much, in my opinion. Then the name change of a season talent from Ranger Soul to Better Acuity. Also, pretty clear what it is. Now we're coming to a point which um, which have a good turn, in my opinion. Change certain policies and technologies. Policies related to gem gathering now increase your CP recovery speed. The technology gem gathering has now been added. I think that's a good change. Like, um, every season you're having the policy of gem gathering. I mean, in, in season T1 currently, I don't even have unlocked gem gathering. For, for I don't either. You know, like, there's no point... If I don't active farm gems to unlock that for me, right? So having instead like a CP recovery speed is way more attractive for me personally to unlock it because of the effect also that with more CP recovery speed, you can also kill more Darklings or Darkling Fort. That means you're getting more prestige, right? So this is definitely a good change in my opinion. Um and should have been since the game released, in my opinion. But the gem gathering should have never been on the policy. It should have just be uh, oh, an yeah. extra tech point in, you know, like, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't be locked into doing, like, doing something on the map just because of a policy. Yeah. Uh... Remove alliance tech related to speed of destroying barricades. These technologies have been replaced with effects that increase your gathering speed for all resources. Here the same thing, you know, barricades, you know, they're getting, getting removed out of, the, out of the game, right? So now they have um, changed it for the alliance tech or, and gathering speed for all resources. I mean, is it really needed? Um, it's 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 a definitely a good thing, but I mean it's n n probably not gonna change the whole thing of gathering speed. Um, maybe it's I just gonna be like ten percent or something. That feels like it's a change to help new players get progressively faster in season one, 
right? Yeah. You remove the barricades, which are just basically, you know, kind of just there, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, they serve a function in the war, but a lot of people don't fight as much in season one as they do as the later seasons, right? That's the yeah. season of get strong fast, right? And about gathering, 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 getting your resources up, pushing your 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 power, trying to prepare for the big fights that you're gonna have in season two, right? So giving players uh, an alliance, right, the option to increase the speed at which they gather first helps the alliance obviously right but it helps yeah. the players with that as well and it'll cause um okay, i'm gonna use the word here engagement right because if you're gathering faster especially if you're playing on mobile right you get notifications when your troops come back you're gonna be more engaged in the game because you're not waiting especially in season one right you don't have probably don't have that much gathering speed or troop counts right so you're you're waiting two hours for your guys to come back right you're waiting mm -hmm. two hours. Now you're waiting an hour and a half because you got that extra 10% speed or whatever, right? So you, you're you more engaged. You're logging in more often. And, of course, that's kind of the goal of a mobile game, right, is to keep your players in the game and, you know, kind of invested. And then they kind of start, oh, man, I really want to get this done. I'm going to go spend the $2 to get this pack to finish it off, right? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 intentional, right? You want to keep yeah. engagement high because it's a f at the end of the game, the game is free, right? So you have to keep people engaged and wanting to be invested. And then it's human nature, right? If you're doing this every day and you're on two or three hours a day, you're going to continue to be on two or three hours every day, right? And it becomes uh, – that habit becomes part of your routine, which is yeah. the end goal, right? It's to keep the players engaged and preferably spending right as a company they want us to do that because they got to you know pay the bills right so i think that's going to help players in season one more than anything else i'm not sure how much that helps in the later stuff but i know season one like i mean barricades just kind of are there They're right I, pretty much yeah so i mean giving people the option to just go okay we don't care about removing barricades what we care about is gathering quicker you know, getting our because you don't want your legions sitting on the field gathering longer than they need to, right? Because yeah. that's also a risk of gathering, right? You're wide open and someone can just go in there and and you know take your lunch money, right? And then you wind up wasting that time. But if they're in there for an hour and a half instead of two hours, that's a half hour they're not exposed to death, right? So that can help with that because season one doesn't have a true self, so you're not technically safe at all through all of season one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like season and you one, can research. You can research the whole time in season one. Yeah, season one is like uh, pretty dangerous in terms of uh, like how fast can you develop your account and uh, how united is your server and like in the terms of is everyone understanding the respect of that your server is fighting as a server together in the new season. You know that's also a thing. So. Um, yeah, I agree with a point what you said. Uh, definitely make more sense. Like destroying barricades was anyway always a technology which like was finished for last. I think like we did it in season one after the last one. So like it's, uh, you know, there was no point for doing it. Like uh, it just was a waste or like it was just good for spending points at some point to, you know, get the coins and prestige and stuff like that. So, um. Remove policies related to new server openings in season one. As some of these policies would increase your legion capacity, legion capacity has been increased for all heroes from the beginning of season one. This change would only take effect on newly opened season one servers. And per level elixir production and daily resource healing has been increased for hospital buildings on all servers. So this point have two good changes. Definitely. Like, but you have from the beginning a higher legion capacity is, in my thing, a good point since I think we all have struggled in season one with like getting enough in legion capacity to finish a fucking node, right? Uh, I think that was like, or it's like uh, the experience from basically 99% of the players that you don't have enough legion capacity in the beginning to finish your stupid nodes or to have enough to kill darklings, right? Um, it's also going to help you in terms of behemoths in the beginning um, to kill them faster. So um, that's a good change, I think, in my opinion. And the increasing 
from the LXC production and resourcing, I think we don't need to argue on that, that this is definitely a good change and that the developers have finally listened to increase the LXC production. I think like this is one of the biggest concerns what the player base have right now with um, previous nerfs on the game. And I mean, they have nerfed the LXC production. Um, so that they rebuffing it now, basically, it's a good thing. In my opinion, like that, sh that shows that the, that, uh, that the devs are listening to the community and what they're wishing for. And we need to just check how much of an increase is that. I just saying per level. So it's going to be like 25, right? It's going to be per level of a hospital. So um, we need to see how much in total. But it's definitely a good point that they have rebuffed it after they have nerfed uh, the Elixir production. Yeah, I think the the elixir change is going to be really good for most of the player base. I don't think anyone's going to be mad about this. I yeah. I actually kind of like the idea that they're they're doing this change, but they're going to do it based on the level of the building, right? So now it's going to be more important for people to level their hospitals, right? A lot of folks, you know, you're only getting a thousand extra, you know, per level. It's that doesn't feel, you know, you don't feel it going up a lot. So yeah. giving them incentive to level these buildings to 24, you know, those of us who are in the later game, right, to 25, like right? we're leaving it at 24, we're not wasting to go to 25, right? We'd be more inclined to make that jump if we see like, okay, this is, you know, 5,000 extra elixirs, right? That's like a village, right? Like, oh, if I do this one level, I basically got a permanent extra village on my own without having yeah. to, you know, take a village, right? That's going to give folks motivation to push a little harder and like not hold off on those upgrades because they're like i need this so i can fight right and i think it's a good way to do it uh i'd like the legion capacity what? change in season one uh you know because part of the problem with season one is some of the fights have some pretty uh large health pools like i think of things like a uh, the elite dire bear specifically right mm. he has a lot of freaking hp right <laughs> And so, like, <laughs> you, your your legions are just not big enough to deal mm. with his ass, right? So yeah. I, I think that's going to help players kill stuff. I'm thinking things like Elite Necro in Season 1, right? That's always oh, yeah. a problem, right? Because you get clipped by a spell, that's it, you're done, right? It's like giving people more legions gives them a little more leeway. I think it'll make the content easier for the player base overall but not in a way that diminishes skill-based stuff, right? So yeah, your legion's bigger, but if you don't dodge charges or you get hit by the spinny purple cross lasers of doom, right, you're still going to die, right? Regardless of if you have 200,000 troops or 100,000 troops. Improve unit promotion after you successfully promote units, your previous choice will be retained. I mean, I think it's saying already by just reading it, just making it easier for people to push. Uh, it's good. It's a quality of life improvement. It's it's basically yeah. you if your your goal is to upgrade from T three to T fours, you don't accidentally start a fresh set of T threes the next time you click on the building. It's just yeah. a, a nice little quality of life improvement that'll you know, it'll make things feel a little smoother for the player. I think there's no real downside to that. Uh, cause you know, you can't remove all of the clicking, but removing the ability for the player to make a mistake is really what this is trying to do. Right. Cause I've, I've done it myself. Like I'm clicking super fast and I don't hit that up arrow and I push out a whole set of, of T3s instead of a set of, of upgrading T3s to fours. Right. It's, it happens. So removing that, like adding a little like memory feature, I think this seems like it's going to be like, it remembers your last choice you made. And in that yeah. way, when next time you go into the building, it's already going, okay, upgrade this to that. That's what you're trying to do, right? And so you can quick spam and get that done. Yeah, I think that's just a good quality of life improvement. Yeah, definitely. Um, then we're coming to some crazy changes now. Improved sorting feature for heroes, artifacts, and war pads, adding the ability to sort items in ascending and descending order. Also added a new filter feature, allowing you to find heroes, artifacts, and war pads you need based on your requirements. I mean, filter feature, from what I always saw, it's always good to have, in my opinion. It's going to make this game easier for you to find stuff what you want to find. Um, 
So I think with that point, there's no really downside with that. I don't know what you guys think about that. It's good. I mean, you'll get to the point where you have more heroes, so it'll be easier just to find what you want. Yeah, this this is a quality of life change that definitely is going to become much more prevalent in the future. Like as more as as we get more seasons, we get more artifacts, we get more war pets, we get more heroes. The ability to sort and move them around and be able to pick what you want and have some autonomy is definitely going to help. Right, right now you scrolling up and down. Right now, adding ability to sort, looking for just archer heroes. Right. Something yeah. like that is going to really, really help people, you know, kind of know what to focus on, what to look at, things like that. And having the ascending, descending orders are just, it's just a quality of life improvement. I think it's going to be really, really uh, more prevalent or more noticeable when we start getting a, into later seasons, like a year from now, and there's like twice as many heroes. Yeah, definitely. Um, then improve the auto positioning system for medium range units. Uh, legions will now position themselves more naturally when marching group. I mean, that's that's probably something good for uh, T5 five marching, you know, like when we're using infantry and range lo uh, legion. I think for the majority of player base, when they're not doing melee and range units together, I think it will not have a direct effect. But I mean, it's good to have it for sure. But um, the positioning system, it's going to be better and that it's going to be more natural. I mean, make, make, it makes no sense, but my melee range is, like, behind the range region. It makes no sense. So I think this um, is a good change. As well as the next one. Improve Legion march, uh, marching. Legions will now move more freely when trying to enter nearby buildings or cities. I don't know about you guys, but I have always a feeling when I city hop that it feels like not... F I how to say it? it's like it's not feeling good like it's, it's, it's not, not like, fluid it's not one yeah. simple movement it's kind of jittery yeah. yeah exactly like you 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 waste basically wasting like one to two sec when you're entering the city and to get out then again instead of like you enter and can jump out directly again like it's uh so i hope it's more like this and it makes it overall more um yeah more fluent um yeah when we have been a bunch of toha skill different or like changes it's basically the whole kit from toha got changed um so previously he did five normal attacks right and he was doing when the the rage of plateau doing damage to a target legion every second for up to five seconds moving interrupt channeling now it's basically changing from the in terms of how many normal attacks he is doing to three instead of five but the damage is increasing on the last level to 500 it's still the same amount of guys if you think about it, it's five times 300 and now it's three times 500 so it's the same amount of damage the big difference from this is that you don't um if you're moving you don't interrupt it anymore that's the big thing and that is having a cooldown to four seconds and um the cooldown for four seconds if you think about that guys uh, if you're gonna be a deputy, right? Like, uh, he is having uh, three normal attacks, right? Uh, so in one normal attack, we know it's one turn, so it's one second. So let's say the the farmer is doing his uh, his third skill, where every skill from this point is after seven seconds. So um, he doing his uh, his skill. When Toha is doing his free normal attacks, we know this having a cooldown, a cooldown of four seconds. So he's doing basically with his free normal attacks, and the cooldown is going to be seven seconds. And basically, the primary is doing again his uh, his active skill, and in that time, the cooldown is running out. So basically, Toha can do directly again the the skill from himself. So I think that's a good change, and it's it looks to me that. Especially the, uh, the the part of it moving, not interrupting the shunning anymore. It's a shoot W. Be before you was basically, if you want to do the damage, you need to stand still and taking probably a lot of damage. Now you can move out and still do the, the damage, basically. So I think that's a good change. 
It's a good change. A lot of people were expecting a lot from the mages, the new mage heroes, so having buffs coming to them and make them more viable is just a good change. Yeah. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what you can now do with Tohar compared to yeah. what you the previous options. I mean it's always a thing, right? Like we uh, the update could um, say it's a good thing, but when you're gonna do the testing and it come out that it's completely trash, you know. So um, yeah. we need to uh, wait how the testing gonna be, and then we have for sure uh, if it's gonna be good or not. Um, but based on what you re have read it here, guys, I'm telling you this is the changes for Toha, as no one basically was playing him after we. <laughs> After it came out, so um, yeah, with the second skill is um, purely while channeling Rage of Plateau towards Legion to gain unyielding and shader, basically counter attack damage taken minus fifteen percent and uh, defense plus thirty five percent on last level. Um, and now it's a change, you know. Now it's basically when he's doing his active skill, he gaining it for five seconds. Before it was basically uh why channeling it and here again the f the thing of when you have moved you have interrupted so you also lost the counter attack damage taken and defense buff now you have it for five seconds so even if you move you have it still so it's definitely a buff for him as a commander uh in terms of the buff himself it's still the same 15 and 35 percent as you can see um then we're coming to the third skill which is basically the same um or not the same it's 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 a, it's a buff which is doing basically two more seconds that's it it's the same amount of attack you just have it for two more seconds when he's fin finishing his wage of clear two and yeah so this is uh, these are definitely good changes for toha in my opinion Overall, like every skill which got um, here changed is definitely a buff. So we're going to see how it comes out in the reports when people are going to test it out. And um, yeah, when we're going to have the final point on it, if it's going to be worth to play a Toha now or not, right? Um, yeah, I don't know about you. When this <laughs> artifact skill, Storm Peak skill, uh, I don't know. I think it's the whatever, bro. I mean, it's in my opinion definitely buff what they have changed here, but it's for me not something to talk about to be honest, since it's calf and calf is useless in a war. So it's whatever, man. In my opinion, especially because the cloned legion disappears ten seconds after being summoned, so it's not really having an impact in my opinion. I don't know if you, maybe you guys have a different opinion of that, but. For me personally, it's whatever. I personally have never used the artifact, and I, I just, you know, calves are not that great. They're a glass cannon, and not even a good cannon. Yeah. So, yeah, let's uh, move on on the next point. Um, Engineering Talent Barricade Destroyer has been replaced by Hard Hat. PSD Barricade Destroyer increases engineering by 200% when Legion destroys Barricade. Now, Hardhead Legion gains 10% enemy attack mitigation when building or destroying building sentry. I mean, it's based on the fact that they, you know, removing the, uh, the, the Barricade stuff, it makes also sense to remove that and replace it by other buff or, or debuff. So, I mean, yeah, 10% enemy attack mitigation when you're building or destroying buildings. It's fine, I guess. It's it's not crazy stuff, but it's uh, it's good, I guess. Um, improved descriptions for engineering related hero skills and talents. Yeah, I don't exactly know what they have improved, but <laughs> we're gonna see it when it's gonna be come out, I guess. We do yeah, some difficult... of the words are the same on multiple. Yeah, scales. so there's Maybe... probably gonna be like. This does this when you're doing buildings, and this does this when you're destroying. It probably change a little bit, but overall, yeah. engineering is it's just not rewarding, right? To be <laughs> engineering yeah. right now, like it's just there's. I mean, it's an essential part of the game, right? You got to build towers and roads and all that, but it's like 
you you're sitting duck which of course that's fine right but it's you you get punished severely right most of the time you're going to use your infantry to do it too right yeah so like just losing not having the ability to survive with just infant engineering heroes right there's like in war i don't even engineer with an engineering hero i like literally engineer with my infantry heroes because i just know that if someone comes to me i'm screwed right yeah so giving them a little bit of the ability to survive take less hits i think will be great i still think engineering needs something else more rewarding to it i mean i know we get the alliance points and things like that per you know second we're engineering but like something to the effect that makes players feel more engaged with the need to build buildings and do the full donuts around I mean, the flag here we're coming to the to the issue overall I have with the bidding aspect of a game. It takes too long. Like it, it, it like one tower it takes you forty five minutes or something if you have instantly uh full marches on the tower to finish. Like forty five minutes is a long time and when you like need to bid like twenty, thirty flags towards the enemy, like you're bidding basically half a day without even touching the territory. Like while in Rise of Kings, you're basically hitting each other within like two hours. So I think that's also overall a problem with the engineering aspect of a game. It just takes so long. Even with a buff you're getting from the talent trees, it doesn't feel like you're getting really we really doing any change, you know? I mean, um, you, you, you don't have garrison in, in for the towers. You, you have to be open field present. So that makes it even harder to hold the flag, right? Like, uh, in, if you would have a garrison for the towers, you could just city hop into the towers, right? Um, but without open field present, you cannot uh, defend the flag. So at least make it more faster to finish, in my opinion. And you know, instead of like baiting for one tower for forty-five minutes, um, that would be, in my opinion, an increase for the for the baiting, and not something like you getting ten percent enemy attack mitigation. Like you don't want to get any way attacked when you're building, right? Like for so for what do I need that? Like if you if you AFK building, then it's your problem and you're gonna die anyway. Like this is not something you know, it's a it's it's a good change. Ten percent enemy attack mitigation, sure. Um but it's not what I personally looking forward when it comes to engineering changes and stuff like that, in my opinion. So yeah. Um, reduce the difficulty of certain dragon trail stages. Nothing to say against that. It's always good to to have that option. Um, added a skip preview feature for certain dragon trail stages. That's something what I'm looking personally forward because I hate to do this stupid dragon trail like over and over again. Uh, <laughs> it's like even with the auto cars thing stuff this is so boring and it takes you so long to finish it it's like whatever man you know um so having a skip future for for this would be really nice to just you know like you see okay i fin i placed my legions here skip and i see the outcome did i finish it in three stars did i finish it in two stars whatever you know why do i need to watch it like fighting three four minutes um until i get the rewards from it so yeah um, fix an issue where towards the earth con dude would not take effect on behemoths. Fix an issue where ice little skills ice core would not take effect at two stars. Fix an issue where enabling artifact skill auto cut would cause you to attack enemies in the field other than your current target. That's a good ish, uh, change for sure. Um, as you said, Spring is uh, before the recording, you have. Autocast Darklings, right? So yeah, the uh, issue is with like archers. I have the range, but my of course my artifacts not in range of them, so I'll just hit a Darkling for no reason. Yeah, yeah, that's a uh, that's a really that's a big issue. I mean, imagine you like pulling um I don't know in a pet which knocking up everybody, right? It's like not uh, in your favor in the war situation. Um, I mean something like that can kill like a lot of martyrs so i think it's a good change um and then we're coming to an increase for infantry and cavalry 
uh, increase the charge, rush, distance, speed, and duration for the infantry. Scale berserker charge, it's a good thing. Um, like, but, but the infantry is just activating it basically faster and into like more um, durable or faster. Um, it's it's good for the infantry, but for cavalry, I mean, cavalry having also above they not get uh, they not getting intercepted by other legions anymore when they launching unyielding wash but i mean it's still the fact that calves are hella useless in open feed situations so that not really gonna change anything to be honest like the infantry for sure to be able to block faster for example enemy infantry or like to block um if you like i don't know if you like getting somehow behind the enemy um uh, lines uh, and when you're charging with the infantry in the back of the enemy and blocking them I mean stuff like that it's good for the infantry right but the calf it's whatever man calf just getting still one shotted every time when they are in the open feed in my opinion so but it's definitely a buff for calf but it's not gonna be in, in buff which gonna change your whole thing um, in my opinion um then the fourth point, more enjoyable events, uh, you, you break it down fast, and since it's not really something you need to talk about long. You can skip now all animations in Lucky Spin and Wheel of Destiny. You can now use surrounded units in Celestis, Battleground and Twilight of Light. Uh, season reward notifications are now clear when we're entering a new season. Fix an issue where resource cost reduction would not be shown when training or promoting legions during the Chest of Shams event. Fix an issue where progress and points would not be displayed properly in the credit, credit event. All of these changes, sure, makes it easier, makes it better. Uh, nothing to talk about, but pretty much, especially that you can now use also one unit. I don't even understand why it was not possible from the from the beginning. Um, but it's good that we're having it now, and also skip all the animations in Lucky Spin. It's nice. Just makes it more quicker to finish it. Ooh, now the fifth point. The fifth point is something which I, as a leader, looking very forward for. Following player feedback, we have made changes to certain alliance officer privileges. Designed alliance officers can now appoint other members, remove certain alliance buildings and alliance members' personal buildings, and recall alliance members' legions from behemoth less. Guys, this is in my put opinion, the best part of this update. Not the anniversary stuff, not the like changes for Toha, this right where. This is literally the best part of the game because you cannot imagine how painful it is to tell people to remove their fucking turrets or barricades. Literally. Like people not listening, you're marking it down, you're remarking it, you pl uh, you're writing them and they not fucking removing it you know it's it's so painful it's so painful and now you and now like officers who can you have a title can do it it's it's gonna be so good and we have all looked for that like every alliance leadership have looked for that that they can do that that they can remove the legions from the behemoth layers without kicking people out of a fucking alliance you know and basically like it's it's just good it's just a good update. I like it. <laughs> Nothing tell, to talk tell about. Us how tell us how excited you really are about this, right? <laughs> <Very>. <laughs> uh, it's it's a great change. I think being able yeah. to give officers certain powers, right, in, is for our for an R five is going to be invaluable, right? Because there's things only the R five can do, and the R five can't be on twenty four seven, right? Uh, the removing from behemoth flares is huge. I think that that's an interesting feature that they add. It's going to help, you know, guys organize their raids, kick out people who just don't listen, right? Yeah. It's going to help being able to do stuff without the use of external programs to to talk it through, like Discord and stuff like that. You could just do it in game, right? Just get out, kick them out of the lair for whatever reason. I think that's going to help. Uh, removing people's barricades and stuff is huge because how many times does that mess up the flow of battle or what you're planning to do because one person's offline right they built yeah. a barricade and then now they're not on for 
the fight and you need that spot for someone to TP in and that could change the flow of the battle, right? So being yeah. able to do that as officers is going to be great. I think this is the R5. This is why you're so excited. The R5 part where you can designate who can do what is going to be great because for the really organized alliances where you have officers like, this is my guy who's in charge of building locations and this is my guy who's in charge of my behemoth events, right? Giving them those powers that help them manage and organize that part of your alliance for you is going to be really great in the long run and the, yeah. the alliance system is the core to this game right you could you know design all this great stuff in the world and great content but the reality is is people stick around because of the friends they make in the game and the group content right so making it easier to keep alliances in check and do little things here and there is it's just great right this i don't see any downside to this Definitely. Uh, I do think uh, also the, the way with the wording, I think you can also remove people from villages as well, so you can get all your better players, all of your T fives into villages. I oh, think, that I'm would be sure. also so good if you can do it. I would hope that's part of it. Personal buildings. I mean, personal buildings is probably stuff like turrets and stuff, right? Yeah. Lines buildings, I mean, villages. I mean, if you're looking in territory, it's it's you you see where villages. So technically, it's an alliance building, right? And like right. you could That's... you could count it as an alliance building. I mean, otherwise, what other alliance buildings you have where you can remove players from? Keep is is keep maybe counting in it probably, right? You can maybe remove like if you say you want to have only T five and you see T four in there and you don't want them to merit uh to to feed the enemy merits um you can just remove it probably that's probably a thing but the keeps you can remove a lot, uh marches from but what else you have like it's only the keep and then the villages so i i i hope like you said that the villages getting counted here as the alliance building where you where in uh a point uh in an alliance officer who is getting this um this, I don't know, um, war for that to remove the people from the villages who are or who should not hold them. So, man, I, I that's that's something I can't, oh, bro, I can't wait for that. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna make the whole thing so much easier, so much easier, literally. Oh. Really, we we have waited for that since a year, it's man. Great. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh man, this literally. All right, next point: incredibly story content. Um, twelve new emojis. I think sure. Mm, let's see how they're looking like. Emojis always good to uh, annoy your enemy or to use them as communication in chat. Right, it's always nice to have them. Um, added a story playback feature allowing you to view previous story content while watching the story. Okay, why not? I guess improve various story related visual effects, improve story related skipping. You will be able to skip story content regardless of whether it is your first time watching. That's something I like personally, <laughs> just to be able to skip it, whatever it is, skip it. Um, I mean. I don't know, there are probably some people out who, who really like the story and stuff, but I personally don't really care about the story. I appreciate the fact that they that the developers putting so much story into the game, really. Um but um at this point I really don't care about the story as um as an individual player. Um and the last point, improve character behavior and visual effects inside your city, making characters appear more literally and natural. Okay, sure, why not, I guess? Yeah, and I then... mean, this, this, this bullets are really great. It's just about making the game feel better to the player, look better, you know, get, cause you to be more interactive. I'm really interested in the emotes. I know it sounds weird, right, the emojis? Because oh, it says too. the word dynamic. Which makes me think True. that possibly they move. We oh. can interact with them. So, like, you put an emoji and, like, you know, let's say the emoji is like Kella, Kella, make it rain or something, right? And she, when you put the emoji there, she's throwing coins in the air or something crazy like that, right? I, can, you know, because one of the big aspects of the game is the social aspect, right? Talking yeah. in chat, dropping emojis, right? Imagine emojis that move, right? A lot of mobile games have 
motion based emojis in their system right so mm-hmm. a- adding that to the heroes right giving it something for people to earn right uh it's always a thing right you always want to sh- flex that emoji that no one's got cuz you blew all that honeydew to get to it or whatever it's called right so i think that's going to be neat if it's what i think it is i could be wrong here but that word dynamic makes me think that there's some type of motion involved with the emote maybe there's point too. to Hero affection going past eight now. It goes up to ten. So yeah, yeah. So well, nobody for... is getting it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, more emojis is always good. I think. Um, since you guys said with the aspect of socializing, so um, I for example like the emoji with like a question mark from eight years, which you unlock on level eight. You know, it's like it's like you can use it in so many different situations. It's just so good, um, especially with a language barrier. What we have sometimes in game, since the translation is not always the best, and then you have emojis to um, express your feelings instead of you using words. So I think um, that's also a thing which uh, which we should think about when it comes to emojis, right? Since you have, especially in international lines, have many different languages within their lines, and then. Um, you can be using these emojis to socialize yourself and express your emo- uh, feelings when a special um, or, you know, when an event is something or you won or you lose or, you know, you, you get the point what I tried to say. So it's definitely a good thing to have more emojis in the game. Um, and then we're coming to five last points of improvements. Improved unit appearance for Widerberg units at each level now have more impressive appearance. Which is good for, um, I think, you know, when it comes to T5, T4 and stuff like that, to just see the difference. Um, and then we have been added a server hotspot feature. Once observing other servers becomes available on your server, you can enable this feature on the map to see where the most active areas are. Which is sounding to me like, okay, we're having a fight, I don't know, in, in zone 3 and people coming online and they want to know, okay, is something going on? Is there like a hotspot or something? And then they can see directly instead of like scrolling around on the entire map and searching for this hotspot, you know? Um, so I think it's a good change. Just make it again easier for people to find what they're looking for. Um, yeah. Fix an issue with displaying levels for enemies during the season two season stories. Uh, you can now view the sources of unobtained artifacts. Improved user experience for selling warped skills. It is now more difficult to carry out on an action by mistake. So, yeah, that was the update with everything um, within it. And I think overall it's a, it's a W update here for sure. Uh, many good points. Um, some points uh, the community have wished for, especially like the the part of the line system, the part of that you have more elixir when it comes to hospitals. I think the Toha changes also is something which uh, uh, people have looked for, especially since Toha were basically useless and people have invested it, and now it looks like he is more usable for the open field. Um, I think overall it's a, it's a good update, definitely. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see these updates, uh, changes coming live into the game. Uh, Spring is, Zippy, we have some final works. Um, I'll just say overall, good quality life changes. Um, hopefully everything is good and we don't have to, you know, ask for more changes that they changed that we don't like, but I think it's good. Hope for the best. Zippy? Yeah, I think it's great. I think I think this is a this is a W patch. I mean it's it's great for the players. Everything in there is, you know, good news. Right? This there's, there's nothing that's like, oh my gosh, this is bad. Like immediately that jumps out. Uh, yeah. I, I like all the social features that they're adding. I really think that they're starting to realize that the player base really it drives your game, right? You want people to be engaged and keep playing and communicate, especially an international game, right? Where it's all different countries. 
So I think adding the emojis, uh, I'm really, I'm really excited about dynamic emojis. If it's what I think it is, um, but you know those kind of features, I like the server hotspot thing. I think it's going to be like the way that explore feature works on the map, where you hit explore and you can see where the villages are and the observatories. I imagine you hit server hotspot when you, you know, looking at another server, and it it changes the map, you know, to like the where you see the resource map. I don't know if you ever seen that one and stuff's red or green, it'll probably do something like that to let you know, well, this is where mm. the fighting is, right? Because when you when you go to view another server, you can look at where the hotspots, where the, the action is, and go there and watch, right? It definitely seems like they want to kind of, I don't want to use the word esportsy here, right? But they're kind of trying to go down to make this a more interactive thing. Because how many times do people were like, hey, look at this fight, they link it, and then people are watching it together, discussing the fight, looking at strategies, right thinking about how they're going to apply that to theirs right same thing for behemoths you watch how someone killed it you're like oh we should try that when we do ours right mm -hmm. i think those kind of features are really really great for building that community aspect and stuff right you guys could do view parties together to watch a war right i think that's going to help you know alliances bond and things like that i think they're going in the right direction with the social aspect of the game yeah definitely I mean, if we if we taking a Rise of Kings as a comparison, um, many people watching these bigger kingdoms fighting each other, like the top kingdoms, right? It's like very uh, well known um, when it comes to watching. Like you have hundreds of viewers on YouTube or when you stream it. So um, I agree with her, with a point what you said, where that uh, uh, they hopefully trying to make it more visible to players with like fighting stuff. Um, and basically, you know, uh, going into the way of what Rise of Kings have right now, that people are interested by themselves in watching other fighting. And um, yeah, and for that, of course, you need to have also more elixir, more stamina. And these other changes which you have right now. I mean, look at Season T1, we have tons of um, stamina up, uh, uh, increasing, right? Like we have 50 more stamina on all heroes. We're having overall stamina recovery uh, speed from the policies. Now we're getting an elixir buff. So all of these changes also um, going towards the aspect of that you can fight longer, that you have bigger fights, that uh, people are more interested into this type of uh, uh, game um, stuff. So yeah, I think um, with this update it's going into the right way and um, so yeah let me know in the comments guys what you think uh thanks everyone for watching this episode of uh talking about the update um it's one hour i'm sorry for the amount of uh time what you basically watching but i mean i think we have here we had here an interesting discussion about this update and many good points got said so yeah stay happy everyone and we're going to see us soon on the next one.